Welcome to the MBS Engineering Channel. Today, we are looking at the pneumatic impact hammer, its working principle, its components, and its advantages and disadvantages. How it works in the hopper, silo, and other equipment. We will discuss this in the detailed description given below. The first topic is what a pneumatic impact hammer is. The second topic is the components of the pneumatic impact hammer. The third topic is the advantages of the pneumatic impact hammer. The fourth topic is the disadvantages of the pneumatic impact hammer. The fifth topic is compressed air requirements for the pneumatic impact hammer. The sixth topic is the pneumatic impact hammer startup procedure. The seventh topic is the working principle of the pneumatic impact hammer. The eighth topic is the experimental video of the pneumatic impact hammer. Next, we learn about the pneumatic impact hammer. The first point is that a pneumatic impact hammer is used to improve the material flow with shock waves. The second point is that pneumatic impact hammers are another way to displace materials in the hopper, silo, bin, and containers. The third point is that pneumatic impact hammers use compressed air to direct force into a piston, which will strike against bins at critical points to dislodge materials. The fourth point is the pneumatic impact hammers are an efficient solution against bridging and dust buildup. The fifth point is that pneumatic impact hammers are part of the product range, assisting with silo and hopper flow. They are used to destroying archers. The energy released at periodic intervals upon impact is transmitted directly to the wall. Hammers cause a highly violent impact on the wall. They are suitable for all types of silos and hoppers. Next, we learn about the components and source of the pneumatic impact hammer. The following main components and sources are required for the pneumatic hammer. The first main source is the compressed air supply. The second component is the pneumatic cylinder. The third component is the solenoid valve. The fourth component is the push bottom switch with the timer panel. The fifth component is the PU tube. The sixth component is fittings. Please refer to the picture of the pneumatic cylinder, solenoid valve, PU tube, and fittings for better understanding. Next. We learn about the advantages of the pneumatic impact hammer system. The first advantage is the ease of cleaning. The second advantage is low cost. The third advantage is low maintenance. Next, we will discuss the disadvantages of the pneumatic impact hammer system. The first disadvantage is leakages. The second disadvantage is noise. The third disadvantage is the limited range of force. The fourth disadvantage is the need to protect from water. Next, we learn about the compressed air requirements for pneumatic impact hammering system. The compressed air supplied to the various utilities must have certain special features. The first requirement is the compressed air should be clean and free of scale which could damage the solenoid valves present on the percussion gun. The second requirement is the compressed air should be dehumidified. The use of a condensate trap is advisable. The third requirement is the compressed air should be unlubricated or lubricated if required. The first requirement is the compressed air should be the operating pressure shall never exceed 6 bars. Next. We learn about the pneumatic impact hammer startup procedure. 
Before carrying out any operation on the component, make sure it is in safety status. The first step is to switch on the compressed air supply. The second step is to check that minimum and maximum pressures are within the allowable range. The third step is to switch on the power supply adjusting. The fourth step is the duration of impulse maximum 0.3 seconds. The fifth is to adjust the operating pressure to obtain the desired percussion. Next, we learn the working principle of the pneumatic impact hammering system. The first step is that each hopper can be equipped with pneumatic hammers to prevent dust from forming bridges in dust buildup to the bottom hopper and to facilitate the dust flow to the subsequent transport system. The second step is that each hammer consists of a special air cylinder mounted on a rack, a solenoid valve, an air pressure controller, a timer, and a hammering edge. The third step is the pneumatic hammer is released by a timer, which by an electrical signal opens the air valve. The air flows in and the piston rod shoots towards the hammering edge. After approximately one second, the valve reverses the air flow, and the cylinder returns to the waiting position. The fourth step is the air cylinder is equipped with a special rubber plate to reduce the noise from the impact. The fifth step is the power of the impact can be changed by regulating the air pressure. The sixth step is double check all electrical and pneumatic connections to be certain all systems are functioning properly. I hope everyone learns about the pneumatic impact hammer, its working principle, its components, and its advantages and disadvantages. How it works in the hopper, silo, and other equipment. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more informational videos. Please like and comment.